Hey, welcome back. Okay, here's where we ended up in the last video. So, a couple ways that we could proceed, but I figured real quickly what we would do is duplicate our ketchup bottle and turn it into a mustard bottle. So, with our ketchup bottle selected, let's Shift D to duplicate it, uh, X to lock the transform to the X axis, and we'll just move it over to here. Okay. Um, here, Let, let's modify this object a little bit so it doesn't look like it's so much of a mirror image of the other one. So we'll tab into edit mode, and um, let's see, Z to go into wireframe, we'll hit uh, A to make sure we don't have anything selected, uh, B to box select or border select uh, this top part here, and we'll make it a little bit shorter, maybe we'll even... Uh, pull it over a little bit, make it a little crooked, and let's see, we will uh, unselect these vertices down here, and I don't know that this will really show up, but we'll just rotate that around and make it look like the top was kind of cut off at an angle. Um, so that'll make that a little bit different anyway at the top and eh, let's try this. We'll put another loop cut here um, scale it in, it'll make it look like it was squeezed just a little bit more. Okay, so now it's just a little bit different from the other one. Let's go over to our materials here, uh, even though these are just placeholder materials. Um, You'll notice that when we duplicated it, it duplicated the material as well. We're using ketchup bottle. And here, you'll notice that there is this two, which means that this material material is being shared by two objects. So if we click that, um, okay, wait one second here. Let's go back into object mode. If we click that two, that will make this a separate copy. So let's just go ahead and we'll just change the color we'll grab it here from from our uh, inspiration picture looks like it's a little greenish type of yellow and um, we'll just rename it mustard bottle okay easy enough um, let's rename this object too mustard bottle. Okay, so now on our table we have ketchup and mustard. Uh, they still look a little big to me, but we can we can scale those down um, a little bit later on. I just want to kind of block things in. Okay, so now the next thing I thought we would work on, um, before we get outside and start working on the outside scenery, let's put some blinds in the windows here. Um, a lot of diner pictures that I've seen all seem to have Venetian blinds in the windows like this, and I think that's a good look. So let's go ahead and see if we can create one for our room here. Alright, so let's, uh, we'll put our 3D cursor about there. Uh, let's go in the top view, put it back here. Let's see, we want it up towards the top, okay. All right, so that's approximately the right place. Um, in object mode, uh, let's shift A, we'll add a cube. Scale down in Z. This is gonna be kind of the box that's at the top of the blinds. So just something that looks about right, maybe about there, looks, looks fine. Um, scale it in X and bring it out to you know, just about the width of the window, so it kind of fits in the window. That uh, that looks pretty good to me. Okay, and of course we have to scale it down in Y so that it kind of fits in the window. Let's see, scale it a little more in Y. Okay, and. Uh, Still looks a little thick to me in the y direction, so scale down a little more. 
uh, something like that, and maybe a little more in Z. Just trying to get it so that it looks just about right. I think that's that's pretty close. All right. Uh, once again, I have forgotten to turn on screencast keys. I'm not even really sure how helpful that is, but just in case, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn those on now. So hold on for just one second. Okay, I've turned on uh, the screencast keys so you can once again see the uh, the keys that I'm pressing, uh, for instance, Z to go into wireframe and Z to go back into solid. Okay. So, here we are. This is the box that our blinds are going to originate from. Okay, so let's go ahead and move that to um, an empty layer. We'll go ahead and turn our 3D view to that layer so we can work on this without anything else uh, getting in the way. All right. What I want to do is, um, yeah, I think in object mode, we'll shift D to duplicate that, uh, hit Z to lock it to the Z axis, move it down. This is going to become our slats on the blind. So, of course, we need to hit S to scale way down in Z to make them really thin. Let's see. Whoop. Zoom into that, that right there. Now, here, let me make it just a little bit thinner. Uh, yeah, probably something like that. Now, for the shape of our blind slats, now, you know, you can have the aluminum type, uh, you know, that are kind of curved up like this, and we can, we can do that. Um, I was thinking more of leaving them flat, uh, so they'd be more like wood blinds. Um, I think we'll leave it like that for now. We can always change it later on if, if we want to. All right, so we'll, I'm going to pick that object, hide it, so that we only see our slat here. Let's go in the top view. Looks about right. Now, what I want to do, um, blinds that I've noticed have kind of a little slit uh, cut on the edge here where the, the strings that operate the blind kind of run through. Uh, don't necessarily have to model them, but I think it might look a little bit better if we had those in there. So let, let's try this. Um, I'll put my 3D cursor right there, right? Uh, I'm going to shift A, add a cylinder. And we're going to try to use 32 vertices we're not actually going to use this me this mesh, so we'll just leave it at 32 vertices. It's fine. Um, whoop, let's scale the radius down to something we can use. Um, we are going to use this mesh to actually cut a hole in our slat here. Okay. Um, I don't even think it matters what uh, you know how the cap is filled, but we're just going to use this to make the shape of the hole we want, and then use that use a modifier to use that object to cut a hole in this one. So let's go into edit mode uh, from top view. Numpad period to center on that object. Uh, let's scale this whole thing in X way down so it looks more like a slit. Okay, about like that. A little big in the Y direction, so we'll scale it down in Y. Uh, probably something about like that is good, I think. We'll move it. Let's see, I'm looking at the grid back here, so that's about a half. That's about one. We'll move it uh, one and a half of those grid units from the edge, okay? And notice that it does go through our slat object, right? So let's go ahead back in the object mode. We're going to pick our slat object again, and we'll rename that from cube to slat. <clears throat> All right, and on this object, we're going to add a uh, Boolean modifier, All right? Then we're going to use our eyedropper here to pick uh, this cylinder object. 
and we're going to change the operation from intersect, uh, I think, to difference. I think that's it, right? I'm saying right a lot, sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, hit apply. And looks like nothing happened, but if we pick our cylinder object here and move it out of the way, you'll see that it's cut a hole in our slat object. Now if we look at the slat object and go into edit mode, you'll see that the geometry is not very nice. Um, we've got n-gons here, we've got these weird, you know, we got some weird geometry. But this is going to be a, uh, a flat surface, we're not going to be animating it or anything, so it should render out just fine uh, the way it is. Alright, so let's go back into object mode, uh, grab our um, our cylinder that we're going to use to cut again, and we'll slide it down to the other end. Okay, we're going to slide it all the way down here, numpad period to center on it, and we're going to go, let's see, that's about a half, well, let's see, this is one, and then about a half, we're just about in the right place. I don't think it has to be absolutely perfect. But we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to pick our slat. We're going to add a uh, boolean modifier. Pick our cylinder object. Change it from intersection back to difference. And apply the modifier. Now we can delete our cylinder object here. So I'll pick that, hit X to delete. Now we have a slat that has these slits. Uh, cut in the ends of it. I'm not sure how much that's going to matter in the final render, but it might. We might have some light shining through there that might look kind of cool. Okay, let's go into front view here. Now we have one slat. Of course, in Venetian blinds, we need a whole bunch. So let's once again pick our slat object. We're going to add another modifier to it. Uh, this time we're going to add the uh, array modifier, and you'll see it looks like you know it shot off the edge there. Well, what the array modifier does is it makes duplicates of your object and um, arranges them in the x, y, or z axis, um, you know, uh, based on the position of where your original object is. In the modifier here, uh, you'll notice it's not labeled x, y, or z. Um, over here at any rate, but this top line is for the X direction. Now we don't want it to go in the X direction, so we'll put that back to zero. We don't want it to go in Y, we want it to go in Z, but if you'll look at our, our manipulator here, the positive Z direction is up, we want it to go negative Z, heading down. So we'll grab our Z direction here, and I'm just going to use my mouse to scroll it down until I think it gets in about the right position. That looks about right, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that looks about right. Okay. Now, we can use the count field here to add as many more as we want. Um, I don't want to cover that whole window, so let's, uh, while we're in object mode here, let's Alt H to bring back our other object. I'm going to hit uh, A to make sure we have everything selected. M, let's move it back to the first layer here. Okay, and then we'll go back to the first layer. Here it is in the window. <clears throat> let's bring back our table, which is on this layer, and our mustard and ketchup bottle. Okay. Go back into perspective view. So, I think in this window, um, I don't want it to go any lower than that. I think that's, I think that's pretty good because we want to be able to see. Uh, we might even take some of those off the bottom later, but we want to be able to see what's going on out there. Now, depending on what angle we want our final render to be in, and we'll talk a little bit more about composition when we get to that point. Because the good thing about a 3D scene is, you know, we can render a shot from here, we can render it from here, we can zoom way in, and we can do one maybe, you know, across the table, over the shoulder, you know, there's all kinds of things we can do. So, depending on what angle we're at, we may want to turn these blinds so we can see through them, kind of like we have in our, our, uh, 
picture over here. Now, the way you can do that, um, when the mo when the uh, array modifier is applied, I mean, is uh, still on this object here. Uh, once we hit apply in object mode, this becomes this all becomes one mesh. But while the modifier is still over here in the modifier stack, we can go into edit mode, and you'll notice that if we hit A it only selects our original mesh. All this down here is the result of what the modifier is giving us, right? So if we take our original mesh in edit mode and we hit rotate along the x-axis um, okay something's not working here, hold on Let's see, we have all that selected. We want to rotate it around X. Okay, this is uh, this is messing with our uh, this is spacing them out too far. But we can adjust our Z uh, offset here. Not quite sure why it's doing that, but at any rate. I'll think about that a little bit here, but at any rate, now you can see if we're down here, now where we were, the blinds are a little bit more open and we're looking through them. So keep in mind, you can control the angle of our blinds um, by doing that, by rotating in edit mode. Now if you go into object mode and you rotate around X, it's going to, or, okay, wait, wait a second here. We rotate our object around X. It rotates them out like so. It rotates the whole modified array around. So that is not what we want. You have to make sure to do it in edit mode. Okay. So we've added um, a mustard bottle. We've added some blinds. I don't think we're quite done with the blinds yet, though. So let's um, we'll shift select that move it on back to uh, to this next open layer and go back there and let's see what else we can do to these blinds all right looks kind of weird with them just floating like that so we need to make the strings that run through the blinds all right let's go into edit mode here and um, deselect everything but let's see. Let's select that whole loop there. Let's see what happens here. Shift S, cursor to select it. Okay, it puts our cursor right in the middle there, which is where I wanted it. Um, and back in object mode, we're going to Shift A, add a uh, cylinder. Now, 32 vertices is way too big. Let's go back down to our usual eight, at least it seems to be our usual eight. We're going to scale this. Whoops. Hold shift for a little finer control. We're going to shift it down to about what the cord would be. Okay. That looks fine. All right. So let's pull this object down. Let me look at it from the side in orthographic mode so it gets rid of the perspective distortion. Uh, look at it in wireframe scale in the Z direction. And okay, I think that's good. Back in edit mode, we will um, just select these bottom vertices here in edit mode and just Pull them up so they're more or less even with the bottom slat there. Okay. All right. So now we have one uh, string going there. I think. Let's see. Yeah, we need to pull this one in the y direction a little front. I think. 
Yeah, I'm going to hit G to grab, Y to constrain it to the Y axis, and we'll just move it out to the front a little bit. Okay, I'm going to shift D to duplicate that object, hit Y to constrain it to the Y axis, and we're going to move one towards the rear. All right. Um, I don't know if we need this or not, but let's try it. Let's uh, shift D this one more time, lock it to Y, and move one out. Uh, just in front. There we go. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to select all three of those objects. Going to um, shift D, and this time we're going to move them along X, and we're going to move them down to the other end. Zoom back in there. Get them back so they're right where they need to be on that side. Right about there, I think looks good. Okay. So now we've got um, the strings that the uh, slats in the blind are going to hang from. I think that looks probably pretty good. Uh, we have a lot of objects now, so let's make sure that we're keeping things neat and uh, name all these objects. So we'll select that top box there instead of cube. We'll name that uh, blind top, maybe. All right. Um, this one is already called slat. Uh, let, me, let me see here. Okay, I'm going to, uh, eh. I'm going to select all of these objects, all of our string objects, and I'm going to hit uh, Control J. That makes them all one object, and I'm going to name that uh, blind string. Okay. So far so good. So we'll pick our blind string object, uh, slat, and the top there. M, we'll move it back to the working layer there. And let's see what we got. Keep on forgetting. Um, might as well go ahead and move our table back to the first layer too. All right, let's look at the first layer again. Go back into per, whoop, go back into perspective mode. I think that looks pretty good there. Turn on our ambient occlusion just to get a little better better look. I think that looks pretty good. Um now in the next video, or I'll tell you what, we can go ahead and do it real quick. I'm going to du duplicate this blind here, move it over to this window, and we're going to bring it all the way down to the bottom and close it, I think. Yeah, I think, that's, I think that sounds like a good idea. So we'll select uh, that object, that object, and our string object. Um, Shift D to duplicate, X to lock it to the X axis. We'll move it over about there. You can see that our windows are not the same size. Um, I don't think it matters. So we can. S okay, let's see. I think if we scale in X, yeah, it's not going to move our, it's going to have issues moving our uh, strings. So let's pick our string object, go to, um, yeah, see the origin of our string object is right here. So let's go to transform. Uh, origin to center of mass. Yeah, that should put the origin of the string object right in the middle. Okay, should be good there. 
So let's pick all three of those again. Um, scale in X. Bring those out so they fit the window. About like so. Let me make sure that we didn't... Uh, oops. Sure that we didn't uh, make our whoops, make our string objects extra. It looks like they're looks like they're okay. All right, yeah, that that looks okay. But for this window, for this blind, um, let's pick our slats. We'll go back to the modifiers in the array, and let's. Uh, Let's add enough so that it goes more or less down to the bottom. Like, like so. Doesn't have to go all the way to the bottom, but that, that looks pretty good. Okay, go back into edit mode. Pick our slat object. Let's close these down a little bit. So, uh, rotate in X. We're going to close that down a little bit. We'll go back and adjust our Z offset to bring them back up. About like that, I think looks pretty good. Let's see. Yeah, we have the right number of slats there. Good. And see, this is what, where I was thinking that these these holes in the side would would look nice uh, because I think some light will shine through there and look pretty good. Um, I think. Let's take a look at our string objects. Whoops our string object and make sure because so I think we're going to have to do some adjusting. Yes. Yeah, we're going to have to do some adjust adjusting to our string here. Alright. Let's see if we can try this. Uh, scale in Y. Uh, no. Oops. Okay, hold on a second. Um, no, that's not what I want to do. Okay, let's see. Let's go back into edit mode. I guess we're going to have to do it uh, this way. There's probably a, a different way, but um, just can't think of it right now. Alright, so I'm going to hover my mouse over this one, hit L to sele select everything that is linked to that, and we're just going to grab it in Y and pull it up so it's there. Uh, deselect everything, Z, then we need to move this one, so hover over that, L, select everything that's linked to that, grab it in Y, Move it so it's back there, about. Uh, might be a little too far. Grab it and Y. Yeah, so it's right about there. Uh, we'll grab this one. Grab it and Y and put it so it's just right at the front there. Okay. I think, I think that looks pretty good. Um, I will go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. Um, it would be a little tedious, I think, to, to watch me do that again. Um, but what we can do is uh, select all of these at the bottom. And while we're still in edit mode, I guess it doesn't matter. We can um, grab it in the Z axis and just bring it down to the bottom of where the blinds are now. Okay, so 
back into perspective. Here's what we have now. Um, so I was thinking, I want the main focus, I'm thinking the final render to be kind of over here uh, on this side. And I like the way the blinds look, and I think it's pretty cool if we'll see some light shining through those holes that we made in there. So I think it's starting to come together. We may need to do a little bit of adjustment. These may be a little wide. Um, may need to adjust them just a hair. But I think we're doing pretty well so far. In the next video, we are going to model some things outside the scene here, just for a change of pace. So until next time, uh, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching.